Healthcare and Communicable Diseases in the Senate, distinguished Senator Mao Ohabuma to give us the keynote address and the keynote address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Distinguished members of the high table, the coordinator of social justice, colleagues, major stakeholders in the health sector, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you greetings from the Senate, particularly from members of the Senate Committee on Primary Health, Communicable and Non-Communicable. I have to apologize coming a little bit late is because of the fact that I've taken this uh, gathering seriously and I felt I must be here personally. Otherwise, I would have sent somebody else. And you know, naturally, there are so many conflicting uh, programs. And I'm also standing on this to even take uh, uh, excuse in advance that immediately after this uh, keynote address, I will also be running out to meet the days uh, sitting. I want to also stand here really to commend the coordinator and the Center for Social Justice for uh, convening this uh, dialogue. This dialogue really wouldn't have come at a better time than now. Like it's been said and we know that any moment from now, especially by 2017, most of our foreign donor agents, most of our foreign partners will be taking the back seat in terms of uh, funding. So it is important and uh, imperative that we begin now to discuss which way forward for Nigeria. And that is why for me, this dialogue on innovative uh, funding and looking at ways to fill in these gaps, for me, is very, very important. And I also want to thank my brother, I don't know whether it's professor or doctor or whatever, but I think I give you Professor Agu, who spoke when I came in. Uh, it was really an eye-opener. And I want to assure you and assure Center for Justice, uh, um, Social Justice, that the Parliament, the Senate in particular, will be available and open to collaborate with you. We are not doers of knowledge. We also need to know most of this. Is. I can tell you that I'm going to leave here a little um, knowledgeable and enlightened more than I came and that is why it's important that once in a while we urge you to come in we are available so that we can synergize, we can work together so that you can also have this retreat together, don't think that we know it all really we don't and uh, I want to commend you and because of the importance of this dialogue and I know that there will be a communique at the end of the day which I'll be looking to receiving to help us in our legislative programs, I decided to put my thoughts really in a pen and paper. So permit me quickly to go through this. A keynote address delivered by Senator Mao Ohuabungwa, Chairman Senate Committee on Primary Health Care, Communicable and Non-Communicable Diseases, on the occasion of the dialogue on innovative funding for maternal, newborn and child health organized by the Center for Social Justice, holding on this day, the 26th day of April 2016, at the Dennis Hotel, Abuja. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once more it is my pleasure to be here with you today to share some issues of major concern in the promotion of the health of our citizens at the grassroots in particular. I must commend your organization for being in the vanguards of a strong advocacy towards the attainment of robust policies that will deliver quality life to Nigerians, especially in the health sector. Truly, the health of the citizenry remains an important measure for assessing the overall well-being of a nation. And that is the reason for the global drive towards equitable health care for all. That is why it is generally conceptualized that primary health care remains the most acceptable approach in the global drive to achieve equitable health care delivery at the grassroots of all communities and nations. There is no doubt that this approach 
when properly implemented and funded, have the capacity of touching on all the essential areas of health problems experienced in our communities, especially in the areas of promotion, preventive, curative, and rehabilitation. Since the focus of primary health care is on individuals, communities, families, and essentially, and essentially captures the needs of mothers, newborn, and the child health. Primary health care therefore constitutes the first segment of the health sector towards a potable health care process and as such deserves adequate funding from all concerned sectors. It has been noted by major analysts that the critical elements in the drive towards equitable healthcare deserving adequate funding are not only based on available science, but mostly rely on the political will of governments to see the sector as a priority area that deserves the mobilization of adequate resources and funding to implement the process. It is therefore largely the lack of political will of governments that the paucity of funding of the primary health care sector has persisted and affected services related to maternal, newborn, and child health. This may explain why Nigeria in 2010, according to the statistics of World Health Organization report, report was rated as one of the worst countries in sub-Saharan Africa with a deplorable health status, where an average of 143 children per 1,000 births die before their fifth uh, birthday. Usually, the problem that impacts on multiple deaths of children and requiring adequate funding includes education concerning prevailing health problems of mothers, children, and newborn. That's why we emphasize on advocacy. Education is very, very important. No matter the level, no matter how minimal it could be, it's important for us to educate our people because through education, we help to prevent some of these uh, problems, especially through proper and how to prevent such problems, especially through proper nutrition, adequate supply of safe water, basic sanitation, family planning, immunization against family planning, immunization against major infectious diseases, prevent prevention of locally endemic and epidemic diseases, and procurement of essential drugs. Since the above services have never been adequately funded by government to pursue better results, it becomes obvious why the health of mothers, newborn and children, are impaired in our communities. These health situations have only been mitigated through the intervention of external donor agencies, like we had earlier expressed and explained. Despite the growing cost of procuring materials essential for the primary health care issues affecting maternal, newborn, and child health, and the dwindling support of external donors, an assessment of the federal government of Nigerian funding of the health sector in the past five years may shed light on the persisting problems of this sector. I think my brother, the professor, had done so much on this from the graph we saw. It is important that we saw the funding, and that is why, too, I'm, I'm talking about collaboration. Because when these uh, donors take the back seat, the only major way we can fund this is through the legislature. Because we know, and you agree with me, that the power of the post is as invested in the legislature. And if we collaborate with you, and with the willpower, like I've always said, I think definitely we're going to move forward and the gaps, by the grace of God, will be filled. But still, let me mention that from our own records available, we found out that in 2012, the sum of 282.77 billion was budgeted. I'm talking of health, not just uh, primary health. Then in 2013, 279. In 2014, 264. In 20, that's billion place, Naira. In 2015, 259. And in 2016, 257. You can see that we are really dwindling. We are going down. And we must. As a, as a group, as a body, 
agreed that from next year particularly, we must ensure that we double this fund. Uh, it is important, otherwise, I wouldn't know where we'll be in the next few years. And like somebody said, we have to get to kill the lion. It is important. It is worthy to know that the federal health budget, which over around five to six percent of their budget, still fall short, far short of the fifteen percent Abuja declaration in which the heads of states of Africa Union you know, met here in Abuja and pledged to improve the funding of health sector through their location of at least 15% of the annual budget as a means of improving the funding needs of the sector. Well, from the graph, it's possible that some other African countries already at least implemented, but we are still falling far short of that. And I think, hello. Equally, Nigeria's health sector budgets calculated as within 1,680 naira per capita of the population is below whose recommended average of 6,908 naira per capita. You can see the difference. Observers have also noted that the current health budget of 2016 equally for, failed to comply with the statutory provision of the new National Health Act of 2015. This is serious. The National Health Act of 2014. And this will be the first time we're implementing it and we're already falling short. It's an impeachable offense. So. <laughs> All this to a large extent suggests that the lopsidedness of the funding of primary health care especially in areas of maternal, newborn, and child health, we continue to be the albatross holding down our health care services in four key areas of child and family health, such as routine immunization, nutrition, family planning, and essential medication to stop under five, to stop uh, under five, I think diarrhea and, uh, diarrhea and uh, pneumonia, I think they're part of it. We can all agree that more than any other time before, greater funding of our primary health care is essential to save our equally increasing maternal and child mortality in our nation. This is even more as international donor agencies, like I said, begin to withdraw support in key areas like HIV AIDS and uh, as cost of immunization of Nigerian children and other associated costs are on the rise. I therefore make the following contribution to the dialogue on the future funding of maternal, newborn, and child health in the nation. One, I urge the executive and the legislature, which we are part of, must have the political will to implement the Abuja Declaration of at least not below 15% of our national budget allocated to the health sector. Two, there must be improved sectoral co collaboration between the health sector and other sectors such as agriculture, water resources, industry, education and housing so that alternative resources from these sectors can be channeled to the communities at the grassroots where impact will move beyond such sectors to also impact on health-related areas affecting maternal, newborn and child health needs. Three, our nation must embrace physical federalism which must direct greater resources to the local government so that such tiers of governments can begin to assume more responsibilities in the funding of community-related health issues common to mothers, newborn, and child health as well as funding other human uh, resources. So resources to a segment of needs, sorry. Number three, our nation must embrace physical federalism, which must direct greater resources to the local government so that such tiers of governments can begin to assume more responsibilities in the funding of community-related health issues common to mothers, newborn, and child health. This is important, really, because you see, we are talking of the health sector that is close to the grassroots. And in the graph, in the gap, if you remove the local government, then. Uh, we're really heading to disaster 
it is important that the local government must be properly funded and they should be brought in to be key in driving this uh, funding really and the only way to can let them is to align them have access to their own funds maybe we have we ensure that the local governments get their funds directly and we also ensure uh, um, local government by direct uh, election suffering that is where we have local elected local government institutions in place not the transition committee things where local governments have become uh, either parastatals or um, prefer agencies under the, prefer under the Ministry of Local Government. If we continue like that, then we're not going to achieve this in the nearest uh, future. The federal, for the federal government must equally encourage the collaboration of external donor agencies and UN agencies so that both can work together to prioritize the areas of greater needs of funding of our primary health care. This will be against the current selective PhD concept adopted by many foreign donors. I think we should key in, we should be involved, even as they begin to take the back seat. For the remaining years, we should key with them and direct them and guide them on the areas of need so that we don't just leave it open for them to decide. Five, and finally, the government will encourage greater focus of major local companies and foreign firms operating in Nigeria to invest in the primary health care sector through their social responsibility involvement. So we need that uh, uh, social responsibility involvement of uh, both foreign and local uh, companies in Nigeria. Such investment, if necessary, should be compensated with mandatory taxable deductions. Such commitments to the future of the Nigerian child will be the greatest investment of any local or foreign company in the development of the nation. Before I end, I want to join my brother who talked about the National Health Insurance Scheme. When the professor was talking, he talked about the human involvement, our personal commitment, our personal funding of health community, even when your salaries are not paid, and where you ask to pay before an operation or a CS surgery is conducted uh, on your wife. Maybe you might not have the physical cash. But I think if we queue in directly to the National Health Insurance Scheme, I think it will fill, that will fill the gap and that will help us to ensure that at least we have access to Medicare at all times. I want to wish you very fruitful deliberation. And if you permit me, since it's like uh, so far, I've not seen the Minister of Health, neither have I seen the Director of uh, Primary Health Care, but as he as a representative of the people and by the grace of God, as a distinguished senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, yes, I take my position to declare this dialogue open. Thank you very much. Well, gentlemen, let's, let's do some more clapping. Well, we have to thank everybody who has made this opening ceremony and session. It's not